on to the corruption story. So the first one we're, that we're going to talk about here was one of the first really big corruption repairs that uh, I did after Derek joined the team. And for this one, we're going to call this one twice fixed because we really ended up having to do, do things twice on this. And what we ran into was that they had 80 tables that were corrupt and all of the corruption was in recently updated areas, meaning it wasn't in old records. It was all in records that had been put in the database recently. You know, this, this was, I think, actually my first or one of my first corruption repairs with Steve. And uh, one of the things that we ran into is, um, you know, we, we met with the customer and we started working. Oh, you know, about close to that 36 hours in that we thought we were repaired, um, we ran another check DB. And unfortunately for this uh, customer, the, the database was so big that I believe CheckDB was taking 12 to 18 hours to run. So we ran another CheckDB expecting it to be mostly repaired and noticed that new tables were corrupt that weren't corrupt before. And corruption that we had fixed was back, but different. So, so something else was going on with this one. Yep. And with this, uh, we started it on a Thursday night and the customer uh, spun up two virtual machines on Amazon uh, AWS. We had two really, really high-end fast servers to work on to do the work, which really helped a lot. But uh, we did all the repair there. And then when, once we did it, we had scripts to reproduce it and rebuild and rerun them to fix everything in production. And that's when we ran those that we found out that yes, things were becoming corrupt again. And we started tracking it down as to, well, why is this happening? And uh, it was pretty bad. I mean, it would be uh, another table every few minutes was becoming corrupt. What did we end up finding there, Derek? Was the root? Yeah. Problem? So I, I mean, this was one of the first times we worked together on corruption, and it was one of the things that really cemented us as a team. Is I was able to go take my systems administrator experience and start working directly with the customer while Steve was still repairing some of the original corruption. We started going, you know, system by system. We went to their virtualization layer. We went to their storage. We went to their iSCSI. We actually tracked it down to, I don't think we're hundred percent sure if it was either a bad twin X cable or a bad switch. Um, a little bit more to the story later. I, I'm into, there was something with the switch. They were able to replace the cable, upgrade the firmware on those switches and new corruption stopped happening. And we were able to finish the uh, initial repair and the new tables that were uh, corrupt and uh, get them up and running that Sunday. It was uh, quite a long haul. Yep. It was Sunday night, but it was late enough Sunday night that I missed dinner with the family. But it was early enough that I didn't have to stay up late on Sunday night after being up most of the night, Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night working on this. Basically, the, the takeaway on that is really to get like a good baseline and understand that when you do have corruption, don't just run check DB once or check tables, just run it multiple times so that you know, are things changing or is, is this getting worse over time? Our next one, uh, we'll call this one Thanksgiving. And this was a corruption repair that we did. It was reported on the Wednesday of Thanksgiving week, and it was unknown how long it had been corrupt. And of course, when you take a look at this, when people say it's unknown how long it's been corrupt, oftentimes we find out, well, there's no backups as well. Because if we did have backups, we could go look at a backup from a week ago or two weeks ago or 10 weeks ago and see was the corruption there at that point. But we didn't have any information as to how long it had been corrupt. Yeah, the, the unfortunate thing there uh, for this customer is actually it had gotten bad enough to the point where it had uh, shut down their, their production and assembly. They were really at a standstill when they called us and uh, we were able to jump in and actually work over Thanksgiving to get them up and up and ready to go. Yep. And we were able to get it hundred percent fixed with zero data loss to get it back up to a clean system and get it ready to go by Monday morning. And really, yeah, if this hadn't been fixed, they would not have been able to run their production line as I understand it on Monday when things opened up after Thanksgiving weekend. Now, one of the, one of the things on this that was a big takeaway was that it had happened at some point in the past and they didn't know how long it had been corrupt. So uh, the key thing here is early detection and understanding when you do get hit with corruption so you have more options to do the recovery. Yep. Next one here, uh, we're going to call healthcare. And I don't know what it is with Steve and I's luck, but 
seems like these uh, corruption repairs always come around holidays. This one was it was just before New Year's Eve, and uh, the actual corruption had happened on Christmas Eve. They did have some notifications in place, but because it was over Christmas, they didn't have people checking them. And uh, by the time they had it figured out that something was really, really wrong, it was already a few days since the corruption happened. Yep. And because of that, they could not run backups. And the backup process they had in place had removed their older backups. They were in a position where CheckDB crashed real quick when we ran that. We were able to run CheckTable, but they didn't have any backups. And this was a situation where, as a medical clinic, they needed this information the next day in order to be able to admit patients and do patient care in the in their clinics. So we started this on Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Derek and I tag team worked it through the night, trading off on different tasks. And by 9 a.m. the next morning, I think they had a couple of clinics that started a little bit late that because of this, but we had it up and running for them ready to go the next morning. And this was one of those that the database was so bad off that we had to create a new empty database and move everything from that corrupt database over to that new new clean database. You know, in in this one, it it was, uh, you know, really rewarding for Steve and I because, you know, the client wanted it by the next morning and we had obviously, we couldn't promise them that. Uh, We told them we'd give it our best effort, but, you know, we figured it would be 48 hours. You know, it was, I forgot what time it was at night. You know, it might've been like midnight or 1am when that became, when we thought 9am would become possible, but Steve and I can admit it, our personal mission <laughs> yep. to, to hit that, hit that uh, deadline. And I, and I think we hit it, you know, within a few minutes yep. um, and they were, they were up and running. And this client had pretty good storage. And I think that if they hadn't had as fast of storage as they did, there's no way that we would have made it by that 9am deadline that they had. So. That was a big win for them. This next one was, uh, we'll call VM host issues. And what we ran into here was that there were uh, several, like a couple dozen tables that were corrupt. And basically we went through and we used the normal processes to find the problems, track them down, bring back all the corrupt data. We had to pull some stuff in from backups and whatnot. And we, we, we did the repair. And after doing the repair, we ran check DB and we were starting to see corruption in other tables. Yeah, and this one was a it was a, it was a small enough database that we were able to rerun CheckDB multiple times, and uh, every time it ran, it was giving us back something different. And one of the things that was really um, really hard working on this one is, uh, and I think Steve and I used it as a good example, and it's something for you all to take back if you ever experience corruption when you're working with your management is, um, you know, it could put, it could put your database in a really uh, precarious place. And, um, you know, just because it's working or mostly working doesn't mean that you can keep operating like that. And, you know, the client here was really didn't want downtime. Steve and I had to work really hard to convince them it was, it was something that needed to be fixed yep. and needed to be fixed quickly. And, on this, there was two types of, of things that we were seeing there. One was what I'd call real corruption, where the data was definitely bad on disk, and we had to go figure out what it was and get it fixed. And then the other was what I'd call fooly or fake corruption, where you'd run check DB, and when it read from disk, it was reporting that it was corrupt, but it was having read errors. So what was on disk was actually fine, but because of the issues that the virtual machine was having. And that's what we tracked it down. Eventually it was the VM was having difficulty uh, on the Hyper-V host. And we shut that VM down and moved it to a different Hyper-V host. And immediately, uh, and the storage was a network attached storage. And immediately after moving it, uh, everything started working just fine. So it was really an issue with that VM being able to read from the shared storage or the, the network attached storage correctly. And by moving it to a different VM, Uh, the issue went away. But then we thought, well, was it simply because we shut it down and restarted it that it went away? So what we did is we took one of the test SQL servers and moved it back over to that VM host where the issue was happening originally. And when we moved that over there, the test server immediately started having the exact same issues. So it was something to do with that Hyper-V host and never found out with the host what was going on. But we do know that 
running it on other hosts took care of the problem completely. So. Yeah, and I believe it did. We did eventually get it fixed by, you know, getting the firmware on the switches upgraded and the host rebooted. This is when the host had been up for 600 some odd days. It also uh, coincidentally had the same make and model of iSCSI switch as the other customer, uh, the twice fixed customer. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, it, it'll lead into one of our suggestions here later in the later in the presentation for avoiding corruption. Yep. So these are really just four of the many corruption repairs that we've done over the last several years, but these are four that kind of point out specific issues. Hopefully this never happens to you, but just keep these in mind if it does.